HR issues can kill you. One complaint against your company can turn your world upside down. And you spend way too much time dealing with HR when you should be spending your time on making a profit. You should talk to Bambi. With Bambi, get access to your own dedicated U.S.-based HR manager starting at just $99 per month. They get to know you and your business while providing HR expertise and the personal touch you need and want. They're available by phone, email, and real-time chat, so onboarding and terminations run smoothly. Team members reach peak performance, and your business stays compliant with changing HR regulations. And with Bambi's HR Autopilot, you'll automate important HR practices like setting policies, training, and feedback. HR managers can easily cost 80 grand a year, but Bambi starts at $99 per month. Schedule your free conversation today to see how much Bambi can take off your plate. Go to Bambi.com right now and type in Accelerate under podcast when you sign up. It'll really help the show. Spelled BAM, B-E-E dot com. Bambi.com. Type in Accelerate. Welcome to Accelerate Your Business Growth, where we're exploring all sorts of business topics. Experts from around the world, join me, your host, Diane Helbig, for a conversation where they share their expertise with all of you. Take what you need, when you need it. Featured on Inc.com, Forbes, and MSNBC's Your Business, this podcast is recognized as one of the best podcasts for small business, sales, leadership, social media, and more. When it comes to business, Accelerate Your Business Growth has got it covered. And now on with the show. My guest today is Darlene Prade. Darlene has over 25 years of experience helping entrepreneurs and small businesses get the right support to scale their businesses. She's Director of Business Development for Peachtree VA, where she helps executives appreciate the support of virtual assistants. She and her husband of more than 30 years reside in Orlando and have raised a daughter who is a performer. Thanks so much for joining me today, Darlene. Thank you, Diane. I appreciate being here. I am thrilled to have you here. Um, This topic, I think, is so important, especially for small business owners who try to, you know, do everything. Um, and, and therefore don't necessarily do everything well. Um, talk to me about balance, if there really is such a thing and how you think entrepreneurs or, you know, small business owners can best find like that balance between time and focus. Sure. Well, you know, there's a lot of people that talk about work-life balance, which does not exist when you're an entrepreneur. Typically, when you are an entrepreneur, everything is on you and you are just maneuvering a lot of different moving parts between work, personal, kids, whatever it may be. So the newer term is like work-life integration, which I love so much because of the fact that you are one person. And when you build a business, it's so personal to you that you can't just punch out and leave it. Um, But there's definitely ways to protect and guard your time that you don't feel like you're working all of the time. One of the things that I coach a lot on is not necessarily time management, but energy management. Because Diane, I'm sure there's things that you have in your work day that may not take a lot of time, but it sucks the life out of you, right? <laughs> <laughs> so, um, you know, identifying where are those energy sucks? We live in such an amazing time where you can outsource pretty much anything. So identifying where those energy drains are. Now, obviously, there are certain things that we all have to do that suck our energy. But if you outsource most of them and really stay in your zone of genius, that not only gives you time back in your day, it also gives you a lot more energy to focus on what only you can do. 
Yeah, I think that's great. And I love the integration idea. I think that is so much easier to let, you know, wrap our heads around. It, it makes more sense. I think that balance thing makes people crazy because it's not doable. Yeah. It's almost like another burden that you're not yeah. doing that right. Yeah. Right. Okay. So I'm imagining that everyone listening can identify those things that don't necessarily aren't difficult to do, but are, but are, you know, soul sucking. Um, but how do they go about the process of finding the right provider? You know, what sorts of things should they be looking for questions they should be asking to make sure that they're getting the right, um, uh, what is the word I'm looking for? The right support. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. That's exactly the word I'm looking for. Yes. Well, you know, it, so I have discovery calls as opposed to sales calls. This is the way I've always operated in whatever position I had, um, where I really actively listen to the person. Most of the people reaching out to me in particular are entrepreneurs. They have a multitude of gaps that need to be filled. And sometimes, quite honestly, they're not even sure of, they know they're drowning, but they don't know what they need. Um, So I would say speaking to a trusted source to really sort out exactly what you need, as opposed to talking to people that just want to sell you their service is important. Um, If we are not the right support for the client, sometimes they need, you know, a marketing director versus a virtual assistant. They don't know, or a bookkeeper, you know, that type of thing. Um, so I really ask them a lot of discovery questions to really identify where their biggest pain points are, what they need. If we are not the right support for them, I have a huge network of incredible people that I can pass them off to, to have those conversations. And sometimes that means getting a couple of other things in place and coming back to us. And sometimes a VA is a perfect solution that get, can get them to the next level to be able to hire someone for marketing and different things like that. Okay, so that's that's interesting. So that sounds like there are times when a VA could be a bridge between where they are and and where they're going, where they could be actually hiring that staff person. Yes, at times. Um, We, I have seen, it just depends on the client. I've had clients that have a virtual assistant for years and years and years, and um, they become such a trusted resource and a right-hand person to the leader that they stay with us. I have other clients that have built businesses. Um, I can think of an example of one realtor where he was so wildly successful He built a brick and mortar and needed somebody in the office to do things that obviously a virtual assistant couldn't do. Um, So if we are getting them to that next plateau where we set them up for success, then our job is done and that's fine. Yeah, right. Um, um, so, So then talk to me about like cultural fit. Because I would think that that would be critically important that whoever the VA is, you know, whoever the support person is, has that sort of fit with the organization and the the people in it, even if there's only the owner. You're 100% right. That is a critical piece. We have a method matching process where when a client signs on, we do an intentional matching, looking at a multitude of facets of that person who is the right fit. More times than not, I mean, all our VAs are highly vetted. They're highly qualified seasoned professionals. So yes, they can do the job, but we want to make sure we understand the um, leadership style, communication style, how good they are with delegating, company culture, uh, strong, you know, uh, their mission, their vision, all of those things. When you are a small business, it's very personal. You develop, it's like handing your child over to a babysitter when you start delegating. So trust is the first 
thing that has to be established. So when you have that chemistry as well as competency, that's when people are more apt to hand things over and be able to build that trust and relationship versus just transactional. Yeah, it's it's putting yourself in a really vulnerable place, which I think it is hard for small business owners, especially when they're the only one. For sure, because they're they're in their own heads a lot. They're their own bottleneck and they're not really sure. And that's why a service like Peachtree VA is so valuable because we also understand there is a learning curve on the client side, as well as the VA is learning how to serve them best. Yeah. But the client is learning how to best utilize the VA as well. And we have relationship specialists that are on our corporate team that do check-ins, they do calibration calls, they have brainstorming meetings with the client and the VA to make sure that that relationship is always gaining value. Um, Because delegation is not the first gifting of any entrepreneur. They're used to just doing it themselves. So sometimes it's just building up those muscles and having someone coach them and help them along the way that makes that engagement so successful. And, and are there times when it evolves into the VA taking on different responsibilities or additional responsibilities? Yes, more times than not, because as I mentioned, most, most clients are not even really sure of what they need. Yeah. What I do is I hear where they are today. I p- paint a broad stroke of how a VA can support them. We ask them what their first 30 days goals are. You have to start somewhere. You can't, you know, start with everything. So starting building that trust, but that's where the VA will proactively continue to make suggestions of things they can take on. And the client will get more comfortable to delegate more. And also, Diane, you you know this, right? Like business, you can have clarity of exactly what you need today. Your business may take a right-hand turn or pivot in a different way in right. six months that you, you don't even know what you may need then. Having that relationship and somebody who's going to support you and be versatile, that's why we say versatile assistant and adaptable and ongoing learner is so crucial to the success of the entrepreneur. So they can elevate themselves and continue to be that visionary. Yeah, boy. So they they really have to, in their minds, become part of the company, you know, feel like they are part of the organization they're serving. 1000%. Um, they can have their own email address. They typically serve one or two leaders, but I always tell my clients too, like they are part of the team. So if you do have a team and you need all hands on deck for an event or something like that, where you need planning and different things that are not typical, the VA is more than willing to jump in and support them. Huh? really? That's interesting. I know I wouldn't have thought of that kind of thing, but, but that's pretty liberating too. My name is Cindy Burnett, and each week I interview at least two traditionally published authors on my podcast, Thoughts from a Page. We talk spoiler-free about their books, so you can listen whether you have read the book or not. And then we delve into things that you most likely won't hear about anywhere else. The importance of the cover design, why they included various aspects of the story, personal details about both the books and the author's lives, and so much more. You can find the podcast on every major platform and learn more about it on my website, thoughtsfromapage.com. Thanks so much for checking it out. Welcome to Don't Retire, Graduate, the podcast that asks you what you want to be when you grow up so you can graduate into retirement with a purpose and a passion, whether you're 25, 85, or any age in between. Gain actionable financial and mindset tips from your favorite authors, podcasters, and influencers to help you reach that exciting next chapter. Listen now and start building your path to financial freedom and reframing what retirement can mean to you. This is your host, Eric Brotman, reminding you, don't retire, graduate. Our VA for Peachtree, Alyssa, she is, um, I always call her Wonder Woman. She supports me um, mostly because I'm the high maintenance one in the group, but um, she also supports, you know, the other leaders on the team. And 
she is really the cog that helps us because we're moving so fast, keep all that communication flowing and that everybody knows what someone else is up to. And she also helps me with accountability because again, when I'm on client calls all day long, it, you know, it can, I might not be in my inbox or she may send me a text like, remember, we have that meeting tomorrow at nine, you need to get in this. So that accountability piece gives me that sense of relief that I can really focus on the clients and know nothing is slipping through the cracks. Right. Okay. But that, that brings up another question for me. So I I would imagine and I think I, I know some people like this, that there are small business owners who say what they want is someone to, in a manner of speaking, take control of those things and monitor and track and, and whatever. Um, but then they don't necessarily like the level to which they dive in, we'll say. So that feels to me like it's a bit of a a dance for the VA to understand, to learn um, really how to serve their their clients. Yes, you're right. Um, not everyone wants that level, and it's not where a VA would assume, oh, they want accountability or whatever it is. That is where that relationship piece comes up, you know, where they're learning how to best serve them. They say, would you like this, that type of thing? Me, I'm an open book. When I started working with Alyssa, I, you know, I gave her the good, bad and the ugly. This is how I work. This is like, you know, what you need to tell me, call me out if I do this, because I'm like a machine gun with ideas and I can overwhelm people. And she's amazing at taking all of that, capturing it. And then we meet, you know, so it's just a matter of knowing how that person is leading. And she does serve other leaders who work very differently than I do, but it's that high emotional intelligence where she can navigate the different engagements and know what's appropriate for each. Well, that's what I was just thinking. And, and really what I was thinking is that the business owner has to have a high level of emotional intelligence. Like, you know, you, you're, you're self-aware. Yes. And so, right. So you can show up and say, okay, this is who I am. This is how I am. Th- this is what you're getting sort of thing. Mm-hmm. So you're setting the relationship up for success. So that feels to me like a real key to having a successful uh, relationship and being really able to outsource those functions that the owner should not be doing. Yes, but I will say that not everybody operates like that and not, and also just because that is, and I do coach the client to say the more transparent you are, um, the, the more it's like any other relationship, the more you put into it, the quicker that relationship is going to gel. But that yeah. doesn't mean everybody, you have to meet people where they are. Yeah. There are owners um, or business people that do not want to be transparent. They feel like that's too vulnerable and that's okay. You know, the, the VA can still serve them well. Um, it just depends on what the client's expectation is. Some of them some of the engagements, I wouldn't call them transactional, but some people just want it all business. And that's, you know, that's fine. Um, It's just a matter of, but I think you had mentioned this earlier, when you delegate and someone else is taking ownership over that area, and you can really get it off your plate, that gives you relief. So whether or not you're transparent with those other things, doesn't necessarily make or break the, break the engagement. It's just a matter of knowing how to best serve the the client. And, and I always encourage feedback because, mm-hmm. 
you know, if somebody's doing something wrong, if somebody's doing something right, or even if it's just not the way the client wants, no one wants to do a job for six months and then find out that it's not in the format that the client likes, right? (laughs) So, you know, feedback is important. And again, this goes back to every relationship, right? Just having those open conversations and um, helps the VA be able to serve them better. Right. Yeah. I think those are all really good points. It really is. um, As, as with any business, uh, the relationships that you have with your client are individual there, you you know, there's not a bucket that people fit into that you can say, Oh, right. This is exactly like that one. Yes. But what I will say is for a lot of my clients, the feedback that I get you know, they have to be so buttoned up and the head of the company, if they have a team or whatever it may be, it is nice to have a right-hand person yeah. that you don't have to have your guard up and that really has your back and is able to support you and know all the moving parts to understand why you may be overwhelmed at times and different things like that, where your team not necessarily needs to be in the minutia. Boy, that, that's so interesting that you say that. I, I hadn't really thought about that until you started talking about that. But the VA could really be the, uh, you know, also serve as the person that the leader can feel comfortable venting to because they're not, nece- you know, that they're just going to listen, right? I mean, they're, they're not necessarily um, tied to whatever the baggage is. And also the way we serve too, our model allows the leader to use them for personal things as well. Back to the work-life integration. When you are, you know, when you are an entrepreneur, when you have a lot of things on your plate, getting a doctor's appointment on a calendar, remembering birthdays, remembering anniversaries, you know, we want to be intentional in our lives. And I think everybody has the heart to be, but it's just a matter of time. I had one client, he was just an incredible leader and he had a big team and he would talk to his elderly mom every Monday and he would send his VA notes um, to put on the calendar for the next week. So he could ask about her friend's operation or how her garden was doing. He was intentional, but like he lived 10 lives. The mom had nothing else going on. Right. (laughs) So, you know, he was, you know, a a hard charging leader. And then by the next Monday, he could just look at his calendar and be like, how is your zucchini plant doing or whatever? And, uh, you know, it gave him that meaningful conversation with his mom. He obviously had the heart to be intentional. She felt valued. And it was a simple little thing that his VA did to really help that relationship. Well, that was really smart of him to realize that that was a way that he could utilize his VA to everyone's benefit. That That's pretty good. Yes, absolutely. And things like that is where when you're brainstorming, you know, with your VA is again, being just transparent. Like if you have a pain point, if they can't do it, they're resourceful. They can maybe offer an option or find a solution for it. We live in a world where people can pick up your dry cleaning or, you know, everything is instantaneous. So even though they're virtual, they can orchestrate a lot of in-person things as well. Yeah, that that's a that's a great point. People need to keep in mind. This is really so interesting. I I mean, I've been aware of VAs for, you know, ages, but I hadn't really thought about it in in these terms, you know, as, as on this level. So, well, I think there's such a spectrum out there like, yeah. you know, any any other type of service. Um, where there's different models, there's different price points, everything like that. What I tell my client is like, when you truly need that next team member, dedicated support, that's where we come in. That's where we come alongside of you and help you. And our, our model is scalable. So, 
you know, for as little as 25 hours a month, which is about five hours a week, sometimes that's a great starting point for somebody who's never delegated or doesn't, you know, have a huge budget or doesn't even have 40 hours to delegate to somebody. Um, Getting somebody in that bite-sized type of support, we can grow and scale as their business grows and scales. Right, right. Yeah, that's interesting. Are there any roles that you would say to a business owner, don't outsource this to a VA? Well, there is a scope. So for example, um, I'll use bookkeeping. Our VAs can send out invoicing, they can do payroll, they can do um, expense tracking, things like that. They're not going to close out your books. You don't want them making financial decisions. We serve a lot of financial planners and people in the finance industry, and our VAs can do spreadsheets and data, but they're not forecasters. So, you know, it's just being wise about what you're asking your VA and the VA will let them know if it's something out of scope. But I will say too, there are things that maybe the VA hasn't done. If it's not going to make or break your business there, and I call them safe fails. So if there's something that if they can't do it, they can, you want them to take a stab at it. And if it doesn't work, it's not a big deal. For example, I do um, little interviews on LinkedIn, and I noticed that some interviews had this branding from other people, and I sent it to my VA, and I'm like, do you know how to do this? And she's like, no, but I'll try. And like within 15 minutes, she had it branded, and she didn't know how to do it, but she's a quick learner. So so that's a safe fail. If she didn't know how to do it, it's not going to make or break anything, but she's willing to give it a, you know, a go. You love that a safe fail. That that's yeah. right. I never heard that before. I, I think I, like I made that. it up, Diane. So right. um <laughs> <laughs> I'll have to remember to quote you when if I ever use it. Exactly. I'll have to trademark it. That's right. That's exactly <laughs> right. You sure will. Oh my gosh. Uh, you know, Darlene, I appreciate this. I think this information is really valuable, especially um in this period of time where I feel like once we were coming out of COVID, it, it sort of feels to me like uh, everything is happening like a fire hose. Mm-hmm. And so, and we want to be able to meet the moment. So yeah. we need to really be looking at our businesses and saying, okay, hang on a second. In order for me to meet the moment, I need to relinquish some of these tasks, some of these functions that are really not my best use. Absolutely. And one of the things I always see is that leaders start to dumb down their ideas when they're the only ones who have to execute it. So there's, I mean, entrepreneurs have a high work ethic. They're, you know, they are visionaries, they're idea people. But when you don't have that support and you, it's all on you those things start to fall to the wayside. So what a VA does is not just give you time back in the day, it elevates that thinking where you can start dreaming again. And even if you can't execute everything at once, it doesn't get lost. So like my VA, if I have these ideas, I can't execute everything at once, but I'll say, you know what, bring it up in 30 days, because in 30 days, I've thought of a hundred other things. I don't remember what that was, you know, some of them in 30 days, I look and uh, it's not a good idea. Others I'm like, yes, now is the time to institute it. So it, it just really empowers the leader to be the stri- the strategic visionary that they are, as opposed to being bogged down in the day to day. Right, right, exactly. That they play the role they're they're meant to play to move their business forward. Yes, yeah, yeah. It's really great. Well, thank you so much for for doing this, spending this time with us. Will you tell the listeners how they can find you, please? Absolutely. Um, you can go to peachtreeva.com, fill out a form. I'm the only, <laughs> I, I am the sales department. So um, I, if anybody is struggling, if anybody's not sure or wants to hear more about it, 
I'm happy to have that conversation, even if it's not right now. A lot of times knowing what options are there once their company gets a little bit bigger or their budget allows is really important to know what quality support you can get. So I'm happy to chat with anyone. And back to if we are not the right solution, I have a huge network that I can refer them to. Um, I, you can also connect with me on LinkedIn, Darlene Perday, and um, I would love to connect with anyone. One. Wonderful. Thank you. I'll make sure that that is in the show notes. Uh, So thank you again. And listeners, thank you. You are who we're doing this for. Thank you for tuning in to this episode of Accelerate Your Business Growth, a production of Evergreen Podcasts. Discover more episodes of this podcast and explore others at evergreenpodcast.com. As always, continue to prosper and be curious. And if you're looking to get your sales strategy headed in the right direction, pick up a copy of Succeed Without Selling on Amazon or wherever books are sold. Until we meet again on another episode of Accelerate Your Business Growth, goodbye and good day. My name is Cindy Burnett, and each week I interview at least two traditionally published authors on my podcast, Thoughts from a Page. We talk spoiler-free about their books, so you can listen whether you have read the book or not. And then we delve into things that you most likely won't hear about anywhere else. The importance of the cover design, why they included various aspects of the story, personal details about both the books and the author's lives, and so much more. You can find the podcast on every major platform and learn more about it on my website, thoughtsfromapage.com. Thanks so much for checking it out.